Welcome to this episode on data import, respectively things that to log out for or that could go wrong. So first we start by creating a new project unless we already have one. And once we have that, we can go to the import section. Choose the file. Make sure we're in the correct project and upload the file. Then we can check our imports. Make sure that we are under register new molecules in this case. Now, of course, you will get a warning if uh, you choose the wrong fields there. So there's nothing really to worry about. Now, once we have that, that we go and assign the fields. Start by the structure, then the ID. Then we follow that by the batch, which in this case we can actually skip. And then we add any other fields that we might have in our import file. And when we're done, we process the file. And this can take some time. So if you want, you can use the email updates function. And for the purpose of this video, I'm using uh, fast forward. Once the import is done, you will end up at a screen like this. And with the email activated, you might have ended up having an email such as this in your inbox. Now, in this case, we have some unintentional duplicates, but knowing our import file well enough, we can go ahead and say accept for these unintentional duplicate molecules and do the commit data import. Here again, this might take some time for the system to process your file, depending on the size. You can again have the system email you when it's done. And again, for the purpose of this tutorial, I will be using a fast forward in the video. Once the import is done, you would normally explore the imported data. But in this case, we can skip this and go directly to the next topic of this tutorial, creating a protocol and importing associated data. Here, double checking the CSV file with the containing data. Going to protocol. In this case, we don't have any defined yet. So create new protocol followed by filling out the next steps, name, whatever data we require. I've done your fast forward. Then we can go to choose file again in the import section, selecting this particular file that we use as basis for creating the protocol. So we wait for this to import. And then we can assign our columns. But in this case, we have to make sure that we are adding readouts and not registering new molecules. We start by assigning the IDs and the batch in this case. And as we will see, it is easy to assume that this is the same as the batches that CDD has assigned. In a moment, we will see how this will lead to trouble though. Now, finally, we get to the point where we can import or respectively assign the assay data for which we create a new run. And we finish by assigning all the other columns. But now we actually see a problem with the import. And we could have probably noticed that before if you would have scrolled down. That in this case, we have a you must not map my sample ID when adding readouts only. And to understand this, uh, we will have to have a closer look at the vault settings. 
and how we have defined the batch fields. So we go to the settings, vault and batch fields and there we see the sample ID is not selected as must be unique. So although it's optional, it is rather helpful and in this case important that we select unique. This will most likely only occur in a very newly set up vault. Now we can go back to our import. We can use the file that we already have partially imported. We make sure that we are in the readout section. We double check the warning message on the bottom where it states that we can only use the ID or batch name when adding the readouts. And here will be our next problem because it is easy to be lured into thinking that the batch here from our original structure import file will be the same batch as CDD has assigned. But if we recall, we had some duplicate molecules. So most likely the vault IDs, which are the actual molecule ID that is being used from CDD vault, will not be the same order or amount as the IDs that you have assigned. And we will see this here when we import this, we will have several batches with identifier conflicts. So we will once again reject this data import and we will go to our structures and export as a CSV all the IDs. And once the export is complete, we can work with, for example, Excel to combine the Vault ID batches versus our original sample IDs. And after some VLOOKUP editing, our CSV file will look something like this. And we can go back to re-importing it. And this time using our Vault IDs molecule names together with the batch number for correct assignment. And as you see, now all the warnings on the bottom of the screen have disappeared. Now we can finally continue mapping our remaining columns and are at the point where we can finally do the process file. And finally, we are at the point where we can do a commit data import. As we see, all 1200 records will be imported. No error messages or warning flags have been given. By means of some video magic, we accelerate the import. And once that is done, we can explore our data, for example, by the scatter plot or directly the uh, explore import data. Hopefully, this video has helped you in raising the awareness on the pitfalls during the import process and thus avoiding some frustrations.